Good morning, good morning, and welcome to our Lunch and Learn. We are so glad that you have joined us. Well, welcome again. I'm Kristen Sharp, and I am so glad that you have joined us for our John C. Maxwell Power of Five Book Club. Oh my gosh. So we're going to be meeting here on my public Kristen Sharp NSD Facebook page every Wednesday in the month of October, you guys. And if you already have not taken a picture with your Power of Five John Maxwell book, please do and tag me on Instagram. I have two different accounts, Mrs. K Sharp and Sharp Area. And I would love to see a fun picture with you and your Power of Five book. And, oh, it's so fun. I love seeing all your names pop up. So if you're just now joining us, go ahead and type in the city and state where you live. I know we have some Canadian girls on here as well. So welcome, welcome. And also give me some hearts, you guys, if you're watching on your lunch hour, because many of you shared with me that you are joining us at lunch. And so I thought it would be so fun for us to call this time together the Power of Five Lunch and Learn. Does that sound good? Okay, perfect. Well, if you haven't got your book yet, The Power of Five, John C. Maxwell, new book, you guys, is for direct sellers, which is so exciting. And I love it because it's short, it has five chapters, and you guys, the good news is, is that anyone can do and learn these five things that he outlines in his five chapters. So. Again, every Wednesday this October at noon Eastern Standard here on my public Facebook page, we will be covering one chapter a week. So this week is chapter one, or as John calls it, power number one, growth. So if you have a friend or you have a teammate that you want to be a part of this book club, of course, you guys, it's free. Or if you want to share this lunch and learn video, feel free to do that. Of course, the more, the merrier. And just know that if you can't be on live each week, I will save each live video on this Facebook page so you can watch it back at your convenience. Now, many of you have private messaged me that you could not find the Power of Five book on Amazon or online or your local bookstore. And you guys, that's because this is a new book and it's just been released. So you have to get it at maxwellpowerof5.com forward slash leader. And if you use that maxwellpowerof5.com forward slash leader, you get the book for actually 12 bucks. Um, thanks to my friends at John Maxwell's office. So I'm so grateful for that. That's how you get the discounted price. It's normally 15, you get it for 12. But here's what's also awesome. When you use that special link, maxwellpowerof5.com forward slash leader, from September 13th through October 31st, John is giving a dollar for every book ordered to the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation. And you guys, if you're unaware of what the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation does, it helps women in domestic violence situations and all that money also goes towards cancer research. So I am so, so excited that John has said yes to this. Now, also, some of you saw the personal video that John Maxwell made for me on my Facebook and my Instagram, and you're like, Kristen, how in the heck did you get a personal video from John Maxwell about your book club and about this book? And for those of you that don't know, I actually used to work for John C. Maxwell. It was my dream to work for him, and I had grown up listening to John Maxwell cassette tapes. <laughs> That's right, cassette tapes. And my mom and her pink Cadillac would rotate from listening to the John Maxwell leadership tapes with our kids sing alongs. So from a very young age, it was my dream to work for John Maxwell. And at 22 years old, I moved across the country from Washington State to Atlanta to work for him. And I worked at his company Enjoy for two years. And I'll tell you, you guys, it was an amazing experience working for John Maxwell, as you can imagine. And I learned and grew from that experience in so many ways that I believed totally prepared me and laid the groundwork for my success in Mary Kay. So for years, just a note, and me and countless others, you guys have been asking John to write a book specifically for direct sellers. And I'm so excited because he finally has, and it's called The Power of Five for Network Marketers. And you guys, I'll tell you that 
at the very beginning of this book, John really has an introduction chapter, basically, that's titled, Why You Should Use or Choose Network Marketing or Direct Sales. And I'm not going to really cover a lot about that chapter, but what I love about that section is that it's great for someone to read that's considering our profession. I believe it can give them really a better understanding of what Jarrell Direct Sales can offer. I also love the exercise in the introduction on page 15 where you can review and reflect on the 10 benefits of a direct selling career. So make sure to check that out if you haven't. Now, I don't know if you caught this if you read this section, but John talks about if he was not a speaker or an author, he would be a part of the direct selling industry because he believes in our industry so much. And this is the other thing about the introduction that I absolutely love is that if you're having a down day in your business or you're questioning your direct sales business, and you guys, there are gonna be times in your career, trust me, even having the top position in my company, there are days that I'm like, ah, what am I doing? So that's normal, I want you to know. But what is great about this section is it reminds you of why our direct selling profession is the very best of the best. And so I believe throughout our career, all of us need to be reminded of why we're doing what we're doing, and that's what that introduction chapter does. Now. The whole premise of this book, you guys, if you haven't read it yet or you haven't purchased it yet, I want you to know is really John comes up with five traits that he believes are the five essential traits to have success in direct sales. They're growth, connection, mindset, leadership, and significance. So today we're focusing on power number one, which is growth. And in this chapter, what's so fun is that John actually shared that early in his career, when he was having breakfast with one of his mentors, he was asked the question, what is your plan for personal growth? What is your plan for personal growth? And John shared that he didn't have a plan and he didn't know that he needed a plan and he didn't know what a plan for growth even was. And his mentor at the time shared that personal growth is not automatic. It doesn't just happen. To grow, you must be intentional. So John shared that all these years later, those words are still ringing in his ears because they have proven true time and time again. And the success and the risk have been because of his personal growth. And he has had grown on the inside, you guys, and because of that, his success has grown on the outside. And I thought that that was so profound. So what is your personal growth plan? What is your personal growth plan? My hope is that by reading this book and reading this chapter, you're asking yourself that question. You see, when you grow yourself, you grow your business. When you grow yourself, you grow your business. So personal growth is a silent investment, he talks about, because it doesn't speak up and it doesn't show up. And each and every day that you are actively learning and growing, it's an investment, you guys, in your future business, your future organization, and your future self as a leader. So no one is going to recognize you for doing this, okay? So that's something for someone that loves recognition. This was hard for me because there isn't a scoreboard or a prize for the person that does the most personal growth this month. Darn it. <laughs> and you're not gonna see recognition maybe in your unit newsletter or in our Mary Kay Applause magazine. However, I can assure you that people that you see are getting recognition and are moving up the Mary Kay career path, let's say to DIQ, directorship, and NSD, it's because they are having massive personal growth. And it all started by growing on the inside. So I promise you guys, from experience, your growth investment will show up in who you become and what you do. And the good news, by being a part of Mary Kay and our organization, we are passionate to help you develop yourself. You might have heard your director, your national sales director say that Mary Kay is the best self-improvement course that you get paid to take. And that's so true. So the good news is, is you're on this Facebook Live, so you are starting the personal growth mission, right? 
And also your weekly success meetings, you guys are huge. Boxer groups, Zoom trainings that your director and national provide, the million dollar message, and of course, our amazing company events because they're intentional about supporting you in your growth. So the question I wanna ask you is, are you getting plugged in and maximizing these opportunities? Or do you listen in and just show up when it's convenient? How do you feel when your unit newsletter comes in the mail? How do you feel when you're sitting in the stands at seminar? Well, have you ever skipped a unit success meeting or a company event because you felt like you didn't measure up? Or do you know that the first place that you need to go when you had a not so good week is your unit success meeting? It's true. Those who show up, go up. You know, Mary Kay Ash was famous for saying that if you had a good week, then the unit meeting needs you. And if you had a bad week, then <laughs> you need the unit meeting. So I'm going to challenge you to get plugged in to your weekly success meeting this week. You guys, I've also learned in my career that, well, personal growth is not convenient. It's not. And you guys, success is not convenient. So I want to encourage you to be immersed in a growth environment that will help you make essential changes to reach your potential. You see, personal growth mixed with Mary Kay skincare parties can make a huge explosion, huge explosion in your business. And the reality is, you guys, you can't just hold skincare parties without personal growth. And you also just can't sit and read books or listen to like feel good podcasts without doing the work behind it. You must do both. So in this first chapter, growth, John shares 10 points, you guys, on how you can be sure that you're in a growth environment. So I wanna review these 10 with you. Number one, others are ahead of you. I believe that we all do better when we have people around us. Having a model to follow will stretch you, right? And purposefully placing yourself in situations, you guys, where others are bigger, as John said, better, faster, and more successful than you will make all the difference. You know, I think about making the JV varsity volleyball team as a freshman in high school. I remember calling my mom saying, well, I, I made the best team, but I'm the worst player. And she said, Kristen, that's so amazing because soon you will be the best player. And it's so true. You guys, comparison is the thief of joy. So I want you to look to others who are ahead of you as inspiration not competition. You know, John went on to share how for the past 40 years, he has had a learning lunch. Did you pick up on that? With someone that was ahead of him. And he shared that he brought that person to lunch and that is where they, he asked them key questions. So these are outlined in the book, but I wanted to go over them here with you as well. He would ask, what is your greatest lesson that you have ever learned? What are you learning right now? How has a failure shaped your life? I like this one. What have you read that I should read? And what have you done that I should do? Who do you know that I should know? And lastly, how can I add value to you? John went on to share that for 40 plus years of learning luncheons with people that were more successful than him has been invaluable. Bigger people made him become bigger. Better people helped him get better. So I have a challenge for you before we meet again next week. I'm challenging you to schedule a learning lunch and ask that person that's going to make you better, that's bigger than you in a sense, right? Ask them those questions on page 19 of the book. Then I'm gonna ask you to take it a step further. I'm gonna ask you to share those answers and what you learned with your power partner, your mentor, your sales director. So, are you in? Are you already starting to think of, oh my gosh, who am I gonna ask, Kristen? You might be feeling a little bit nervous to ask that person, but that's normal and you're gonna ask anyway. Just as I was bold in asking John, hey, 
for every book purchased, I want you to give a dollar to the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation. You guys, I had the thought of, he's probably gonna say no, but I'm just gonna ask. And then what happened? He said yes. So you never know unless you ask. So I want you to go ahead and give me some hearts if you are in to scheduling your learning lunch with someone this week. And if you haven't already, make sure to let me know where you're coming from live, your state, your city, and then of course, if you're from a different country, put that too, because that's exciting. All my Canadian sisters on here, I love it. Okay, so moving on. Number two, you are continually challenged. That's how you know you're in a growth environment, that you are continually challenged. So what big goal are you working on right now in your Mary Kay business? When was the last time that you really stretched to hit something bigger? Maybe this could be a bigger level of the star consultant or a higher unit club if you're a sales director or the next career car level. Or maybe it's that you've been saying you wanted to do a 10 show week in Mary Kay and you've always been meaning to do it, but you haven't done it yet. What I'm asking you to do by being a part of this book club is to stretch. You see, John says in the book that everything worthwhile is uphill. And I truly believe that. So have you ever heard someone in our business say, you're just a decision away? You're just a decision away. <laughs> okay, that used to make me so mad when people would say that, but when you really have stopped and you really thought about what it means, everything changes. So some of you might be saying, Kristen, well, I decided to buy my starter kit and <laughs> I decided that I wanted to be a national sales director and that hasn't happened yet. So that decision thing, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> Come on. Some of you are thinking that, right? But I want you to pause and really consider, have you really decided to make it happen? Or have you decided that it would be nice if it happened, but you're really not willing yet? Well, you guys, you got to go all in to do what it takes to get there. So I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to ask you to challenge yourself. If something isn't challenging you, then you can lose your joy and become complacent. If you're always a Sapphire Star Consultant, then the celebration each quarter, you guys, it's not as sweet. Or if you always do the National Court of Sales and you start to take that royalty reception in Dallas and that sash and that diamond for granted. I know because I've been there. So as an entrepreneur, you have to be the one to make yourself stretch. You have to be the one. So if you've lost your passion, there are usually two things that you must do in order to get it back. Number one, you got to pray that it's going to come back. And number two, you've got to move into action so that God has something to bless. So you do these two things and I promise you that the growth will come. Why? Because you'll have to do the inner work to make yourself go do the outer work. So in this chapter number one on growth, John taught us that we grow to the size of our challenges. All right, number three, you know you're in a growth environment when your focus is forward. So yesterday ended last night. Stop focusing on it. No one gets to where they want to go by looking in the rear view mirror. So you guys, I'm challenging you to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Because when you focus and your focus is forward, you will naturally hone in on what's best for you. Part of being successful is guarding your calendar. So let's talk about this. You know, as a leader, I have found that people will always be coming to you to ask you to be the head of something. <laughs> Give me some hearts or whatever. If you're like, yes, I always get asked, Kristen, oh my gosh, to be the head of something, to start the group, to lead the team, to help and be the, the room mom, to run the fundraiser. But you guys, you need to ask yourself, is that your best yes? John says to say no to the good so you can say yes to the best. 
You know, I remember my mom calling me one day because I think she could just sense that I was completely overwhelmed. And the reality was is that I wasn't doing anything with excellence because I was completely overbooked and I had really spread myself so thin. And through a coaching conversation with my mom, I realized that I had a really difficult time saying no to people. And when I think about it, you guys, I think it's truly because my heart is I love to give, I, I want to serve, and I want to help. But I realized that because I was saying yes to everyone, I wasn't really doing anything with excellence, and I wasn't where I wanted to be in my career or my life. And so I remember my mom saying, okay, I want you to practice saying no. Like, say it back to me. Say no. I'm like, mom, this is so crazy. You want me to say no? And she's like, yeah, because clearly you're having a difficult time, you know, saying the word no. So let's practice it out loud. <laughs> and she, we did. We went back and forth and she would say something and I would say, no, no. <laughs> well, one thing that one of my mentors, Pam Shaw, taught me is to say no, but say what you can do. So Oh, I'm so honored that you asked me to do this conference call. Thank you I, for asking me, but I do have to decline that invitation. But let me tell you what I can do for you. I can send you a pre-record message of that training that I've done before. So that was something when she taught me what I could say back that made it a little bit easier to say no. So some of you are like, yes, I got to practice saying no out loud, Kristen. Um, and maybe that transition of when you say no, to what you can do for them that maybe wouldn't take as much of a time investment might make it a little bit easier. Here's the thing, is through that conversation with my mom, learning to say no, you guys, what it did is it allowed me to put the oxygen mask back on myself. And perhaps some of you need to do that too. You need to put the oxygen mask back on yourself so you can serve other people with excellence. You know, another thing that my dear friend NSD Pam Shaw says is that God created you and God created the day. So if you have too much to do that you can't get done in a day, then what are you doing that God has not called you to do? Well, yes, you might be able to rock that school book fair, you guys, or coach that team better than anyone else, but is it in alignment with your future forward focus? If you take on things that are not your best yes, then you're also robbing someone else of living out God's calling on their life. And when I looked at it at that perspective, you guys, it just made it okay for me to say no. So I'm challenging you to say no more and to really take the time to evaluate you guys and pray over your best yes before saying yes. You in? All right, number four. You know you're in a growth atmosphere when the atmosphere, the culture is affirming. So I love what John says, that in direct sales, we have encouragement in our DNA. I think it's so true. And I loved how John talked about his dad. He, his dad told him to value, believe in, and love people unconditionally. And wouldn't you say that that is just our DNA in Mary Kay too? To value, believe in, and to love unconditionally. So are you doing this? Do you genuinely see people through God's eyes? I know sometimes you guys, I have to be reminded to look at people through God's eyes, knowing that we each have unique gifts and talents that play a part in this world. And if we were all the same, oh my gosh, it would be so boring, right? So are you assuming that everyone is guilty until proven innocent and you expect that appointments will cancel or that someone will start her business and fizzle out? Or are you expecting the best out of people? All right, number five, you are out of your comfort zone. That's right, you know you're in a growth environment when you are out of your comfort zone. This is number five. So have you ever thought about a rubber band? 
I always have it on my wrist to pull my hair back, but it only becomes valuable when stretched, right? Stretching makes you more valuable too. So when you stretch in your strengths, you'll be challenged. And when you stretch in your weaknesses, you will be intimidated. So I want you to think of a football team because right, it's football season, right? <laughs> On a football team, you need a quarterback, you need a wide receiver, you need a defensive lineman, you need punter. Each member of that team has a job to do. And any athlete will tell you that while they could stumble through playing a different position for a minute or two, the star quarterback would not be the star kicker. So you focus on your strengths and master what you do best. And when each member of a team does this, the team becomes unstoppable. So the good news is, is you don't have to be good at everything <laughs> or to really take your team to the Super Bowl. And for me, that's exciting to know that. So it's important that you do have to work in your strengths and team up with others who are doing the same. All right, number six, you gotta wake up excited. You know you're in a growth environment when you wake up excited. So bring your best self to every scenario. And what I love about the Power of Five book, you guys, is it talks about momentum, which is really something that John talks about in lots of his books, but one of my favorites, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He talks about the law of the big mo, which means momentum, you guys. So if you read the box on page 23 on chapter one, it's gonna help you understand momentum. And I really suggest that you discuss this with your teammates. So how do you get momentum? Well, sometimes it's really slowly, which I know isn't maybe what you want to hear. I wish I could like snap my fingers and make it happen so much quicker, but momentum doesn't work that way. So imagine that you're trying to push this big giant boulder. Okay. You are pushing and pushing and it doesn't seem to move. Well, you can link this to your business. You are calling and calling or you're interviewing and sharing the opportunity over and over again and you're just not getting results. At this point, you have a choice, right? You can quit or you can keep grinding. Now, some of you quit only to come back later and try. So you stop and you start and you stop and you start while others of you keep grinding. You push and you push that boulder and guess what? It starts to move. It's slow, but it starts to move. You keep going and you keep going and even through like the tired and the sweaty and your body aches, you are committed to moving that boulder. And guess what? All of a sudden it moves and it moves and pretty soon you can just run behind it and give it like a light tap and it keeps rolling. That's momentum. And here's the deal. You need to get some. Number seven, failure is your friend. You know you're in a growth environment when failure is your friend. Some of you are already thinking, oh my gosh, Kristen, I don't want to fail. I'm scared to fail. Well, I want to remind you that our dear Mary Kay Ash, you guys, taught us to fail forward to success. Her knees were bloodier and still are bloodier than all of ours. But failure, you guys, is truly just a stepping stone to success. Failure is a stepping stone to success. You know, my friend Leanne, I just crack up because she likes to talk about her checklist of crap. Yeah, her checklist of crap. She says, in addition to things like diamonds and cars and trips that we can check off the list as we climb up to the position of national sales director, it's more important to her to hit everything on her checklist of crap. Okay, <laughs> let me explain. So that's canceled parties, that's missed goals, that's years where you slide backwards, it's starter kits that are returns, it's, it's meetings where no one shows up. Now hear me out on this. These failures aren't on her goal poster, okay? 
It's not like she sets out to say, oh my gosh, I hope all my parties cancel this week. But instead, she knows that her failures make her a better leader. Your failures also expose areas for you that you need to improve. And so what my friend Leanne has found is that it's forced her to grow as a leader. Isn't that an interesting perspective? You see, fail failure, you guys, it allows us to coach our team better too. No one wants to go to their director and hear, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Susan. I've never had a party cancel, so I just don't know what to tell you, <laughs> right? Okay, so my question to you is this. How do you view your failures? Are you allowing your failures to stop you? Or are you viewing your failures as really lessons and lessons in leadership? Different perspective, right? All right, number eight. You know you're in a growth environment when others around you are growing. So who are you hanging around with? Who are you hanging with? Are you hanging around people who make you feel comfortable? Or are you with people who encourage you maybe to watch TV and relax and, you know, maybe not book parties or even work your Mary Kay business? Or are you with people who tell you to get back on the phone when things don't go good, to rebook someone else, to fill that time slot, to keep going? Here's the deal. You might have heard this before. This is something else that John Maxwell taught me that you are like the five people that you spend the most time with. So if you haven't done this exercise in a while, because you want to do it often, I challenge you to make a list of the five people that you spend the most time with. And next to their name, I want you to put like a plus sign, a negative, or an equal. An equal sign stands for the fact that they're neutral. So they don't really add to your life, but they don't take away. Now, the goal when you do this exercise is that you have a whole lot more positive signs than you have negative or neutral. Because neutral, in fact, actually, you guys, is negative. Okay, some of you are already thinking of those five people and you're like, oh, geez. Okay, so here's the reality. If the people around you aren't growing, then you need to find new people. Ah, I know, some of you are not liking me right now, but it's the truth. It's the truth. All right, number nine. You know you're in a growth environment when people desire change. When people desire change. You guys, the only person that can change your circumstances is you. You know, my friend, National Sales Director, Linda Tupin, taught me that we are where we are today because of the choices that we have made or that we've allowed others to make for us. And as John shared in his book, here's the good news, you guys. It only takes one person to change your life, you. All right, number 10, growth is modeled and accepted. You know you're in a growth environment and you're growing when it's modeled and it's accepted. So this chapter, chapter number one on growth of John Maxwell's new Power of Five book, finishes out with a series of questions for you to answer to really assist you in focusing on your growth plan, which my hope is that you've committed to making. So I really encourage you guys to take some quiet time this week. I always like to say, slow down so you can speed up to really dive into these questions at the end of this chapter. Because what it does is it helps you uncover your focus and the personal growth plan necessary to get there. So I'm gonna challenge you to share your answers with your power partner, your sales director, your mentor, or maybe even the small group that you form to even dig a little deeper into this book club. And for sales directors that are watching, I want to encourage you to train on each one of the power of five traits at your weekly success meetings this month, or maybe on your Zoom trainings. You know, maybe even have your team over once a week to your home to get around a kitchen table to discuss each chapter. Now, I would recommend breaking down each one of the power of five traits, and that's what I love, one chapter per training, kind of like we're doing on here. And what I want you to do is, is use this video I'm creating for you. Of course, use the book as your guide, but I want you to dig even 
deeper. There's power in small groups. There's power in discussion and implementation. So remember the quote that John referenced from Ben Franklin in this chapter. I love it. It says, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And then John added, show me and I will follow. Empower me and I will grow. Most things in life are caught, not taught. So your challenge before next week is to schedule a learning lunch and to share what you learned from asking those series of questions at that lunch with your power partner or your sales director. I'm also, you guys, challenging you to answer the questions on page 28 in chapter one, okay, and 29, and put into action that amazing exercise that John calls ACT, A-C-T. And then lastly, to show up for week two, having read chapter two. So I'll see you back here, you guys, Wednesday, October 9th at 12 noon Eastern, okay? So same time as we cover number two, power number two, which is connection. Now, don't forget to tag me in social media with a picture of you with this book, as well as leave any takeaways here in the comments. Bye for now. It was a blessing to have this fun lunch and learn with you. Bye-bye.